What's up, beautiful family? Hope y'all are having a great afternoon. So, I wanted to come on here and just talk about something that's kind of heavy on my heart today. And, you know, y'all have always, you know, I think we all can agree that there are many teachers on YouTube. And unfortunately, not everybody is teaching uh, the right doctrine. Um, some are and some are not. Some are leading people into truth and some are deceived and they are leading people away from the truth. And I have always said that if you are listening to a message that condemns you or binds you up or makes you feel sad or depressed or anxious or worried or confused or makes you doubt, then turn it off because it is not of God. And I think there are many teachers on YouTube who mean well and may be saved because at the end of the day, only God knows a heart. But unfortunately, when people truly get saved by the true gospel of their salvation, many fall into legalism. It just happens. The Bible talks about a falling away from grace. And so I've seen it happen. And as of right now, I am praying very strongly um, about bringing up a certain individual who has a very large following who is unfortunately um, not teaching the correct doctrine at all. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, God uses all things for the good. So even when somebody is teaching falsely, um, God will still use that for the good um, to reach hearts somehow, some way. Um, but it still is not right. And when you see the error, especially when there's such a large following, um, you know, then that's just why I'm praying because um, I have felt led to, but I don't want to act on uh, emotion or just act just, you know, I don't want to do anything unless the Holy Spirit leads me to do it. But I want to show you something that really concerns me. And this is why my heart is so heavy. Um, you know, when people listen to these false teachers who I do think mean well, and the, the crazy thing is, is when, cause there's a whole, there's a bunch of different situations out there. Okay. There's some people that are not saved that are teaching falsely. Right. And then there are some that are saved that are teaching right and they're in grace. And then there's some that have been saved, but then they fall from grace and then they're in legalism and they mean well, but they're deceived. And the scary thing I've told y'all about deception is you don't know you're in deception. So that's why you have to not lean on man's understanding. Don't lean on somebody's emotion that they're portraying because a lot of things sound good, but if it doesn't line up to scripture, then you need to question it, right? So there's a lot of different situations out there. And I truly do mean that this person does mean well, um, but it's just not in truth right now. And what people don't realize is I get the end. Like I get, I get all the people that come from the, from that channel to my, uh, inbox, whether that be, well, most of it's on Instagram because I've, I try not to give out my email because there's a lot of like spam stuff that comes to there. Um, which it does happen sometimes on Instagram, but it's easier for me to check my inbox on Instagram. And side note, I am sorry for those of you who I've not been able to get to. Um, I promise that I'm trying my best, but I get all of the, uh, I get a lot of people that come over from this channel that I'm speaking of that are so afraid that they don't have the Holy Spirit. They're so afraid that they may have lost their salvation they're so afraid because they can't speak in tongues. They haven't received the gift of speaking in tongues. They're so afraid that they're not obeying enough. They're so afraid that they haven't submitted their lives enough. They're so afraid that they're like, I'm saying like they're not, they're not walking in enough obedience. They're afraid because they haven't let certain sin go, but they're trying yet, um, you know, their flesh is battling with the spirit and the Lord hasn't delivered them yet. So they're scared that if they die in that addiction or in the state that they're in, that they're going to go to hell. They're scared because, 
you know, people are telling them that they don't love God enough because their actions don't show it. I mean, the list goes on and on. And I get those messages from people and my heart breaks because I see the fear and the anxiety and the panic in these messages. And so I'm just going to show you a quick example. I've already um, blocked out, uh, I've edited out who it was from just out of respect for that person, um, not putting their name out there. But I just want to show you something really quick. I want to show you what, what I get on my end and why I'm concerned and why I am praying to the Lord and asking him whether I should even address this person or not so that their subs can know um, where the error is in this person's teaching. Because um, I the one thing I cannot stand and I'm so passionate about, I cannot stand to see my brothers and sisters in Christ who are saved, who have the Holy Spirit, sitting there so scared, focusing on themselves, not knowing if they have the Holy Spirit or not, not knowing if they're going to get to go to heaven or not. They have no peace. They have no joy. They have no excitement because they're so scared. So just let me show you a quick, uh, quick example here. So this person reached out to me on Instagram Messenger and linked the person's video who they wanted me to watch. And they said, sister, please watch this. And I blocked out the video um, and I responded back and I said, I can't watch so-and-so's videos anymore. I'm sorry. And then they said uh, back to me, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it, Matthew 7, 14. And actually we'll get to that in a second because that is not what Matthew 7, 14 says. And then they said, Jesus says the way to eternal life is difficult, but genuinely believing and putting our trust in Christ alone is not difficult. That makes me think, is that really what we have to do to be saved? What are your thoughts on this? So let's go to Matthew 7 verse 14. The correct translation says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So it doesn't say that the way to heaven is difficult. It's just saying that because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, it does say that few find it. So if in Matthew the Lord was telling us that the way to heaven is narrow and few find it, okay, well, what is the way to heaven? John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so the word doesn't say that, you know, it's difficult to get to heaven, okay? The Lord was saying that the path uh, to heaven is narrow and few find it. But John says that the only way to the Father is through Jesus. And we will talk about what is required from us for our salvation. But first, I want to show you guys a couple more things with what this person had told me through Messenger, and then I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more. So I'm trying to encourage this person that, you know, once you believe on Jesus for salvation, you do receive the Holy Spirit. Um, he starts a good work in the believer. And then I asked them, I said, do you think if you died right now, he would throw you into hell? And this person replied, I don't know, but whether he does, he will always be just and righteous to judge. And I said, see, it's caused fear and anxiety in you, hasn't it? And this person said, I'm asking God for the Holy Spirit. And this is where it just completely broke my heart. So this person has come to me with fear that they don't speak in tongues. Um, and so they are asking the Lord for that because this person that they are watching is telling them and many other people that speaking in tongues is evidence, is true evidence of a born again, spirit filled uh, person. Because this person claims that, well, in Acts, everybody, all the born again believers spoke in tongues. So if you don't, are you really saved, right? So they're coming to me with this fear that they don't speak in tongues. So they're asking the Lord to speak in tongues so they can, I guess, like, get the clarity that they need that they're actually really saved right um and then this person is in fear 
that they haven't been water baptized because this person that they are watching says that you must be water baptized to receive the Holy Spirit, okay? This person does not believe that when you believe on Jesus Christ that you receive the Holy Spirit. So this person is teaching that you have to be water baptized in order to receive the Holy Spirit. And so this person who had reached out to me was in fear. And they said that they had been, because I asked, I said, have you been water baptized? And they said that they have not, but that they were praying to the Lord about it. And so, um, and then I asked, okay, well, I just want to kind of, you know, see where this person is, you know, where their heart is like, you know, are they fearing? Are they, and then I asked, I said, do you um, think that right now, if you went or if you, if you died right now, do you think that you would go to hell? And that person didn't know. Um, th and then proceeded to say that they were uh, praying to God to receive the Holy Spirit. And it completely broke my heart. Um, I almost want to cry and I'm like trying to hold it back because it just, let me show you what the word says. Okay. And then we'll talk a little bit more. First Corinthians 15 verse one through four. We're going to read it together. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. This is the most important thing right here, guys, and I even underlined it. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved. So he's saying right here, this is how you're saved. So, okay, let's read it again. <laughs> by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel of your salvation. That is how you are saved. Romans 10, verse 9 through 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That is how you are saved. The gospel of your salvation is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4, and right here in Romans 10, verse 9 through 10, you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart. It's a heart condition. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So when you heard the truth, found in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 through 4, that Christ died for your sins, he was buried, and that he rose again. When you heard that word of truth, that's the gospel of your salvation, okay? In whom also after that you believed. So when you believe, just like in Romans 10, verse 9 through 10 says, when you believe in your heart, okay? It says, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto, I'm sorry, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory, guys. The gospel of your salvation, when you heard the truth, when you believed it, when you heard it and you believed it, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I am so heartbroken reading these messages, and that is only one example, okay? I'm so heartbroken for these people who are so bound up and in fear and anxiety, and they're in confusion. They're doubting their salvation now because they have somebody who it seems like, you know, that they're hearing from the Lord, okay? That's why you don't, people are so moved by emotion, okay? You have to look past that. Are they speaking truth, okay? Stop leaning on man's understanding and go to God, uh, go to his word for the truth, okay? And if you feel like you're still confused or you're not sure, um, then you ask the Lord for eyes to see. You humbly Go to the throne and ask him for his truth. God, reveal to me what is your truth, no matter what it is, okay? Reveal it to me. I'm so heartbroken to see these people that come to me after listening to these messages. They, you can tell 
And even whenever I finally, okay, I finally clicked on it today, the message or the, uh, the video that this person linked to me. And I, as a believer in Christ, okay, if I was not, you know, and I'm not invincible, okay? I still, the enemy still like tries to get at my mind, right? But if I was somebody who was not as strong in my faith as what I am, um, or like how I am <laughs> strong in my faith right now, thank God. I mean, it's only him that gives me the strength to stand on the gospel, um, putting on the full armor every day and just praying for his strength. And, um, but if I was somebody who was weak, uh, in the faith, okay, or I wasn't strong on the gospel, I didn't fully grasp it or understand it, okay, um, I would feel really condemned after listening to that. I would be in fear of my salvation. I would be scared and not know if I was going to heaven or not, okay? And this is why you have to discern. Ask the Lord for discernment. Um, ask God for his truth, okay? And like I said, don't lean on man's understanding um, because I've always told you guys, if you're listening to a message that condemns you, um, you know that you believe in your heart, okay? I just went over the word. Um, people just, they don't understand how to rightly divide. They don't understand dispensations. They don't know how to properly, properly read in context, okay? And, you, you know, it's, I have grace and mercy. Like, I have grace for people, right? Like, I understand that the Lord reveals um, things in different times to different people. Um, and you don't know who's truly saved and who's not, okay? So, you have to be really careful. But it's just the truth, okay? This person that these people are listening to, I think probably is saved. But I think this person fell into legalism. And now, unfortunately, is when that person goes to turn on the camera whenever they film, they're doing more harm to people than good, okay? This person right now would be better off not going on camera, humbly seeking God's face and asking him, okay, what is your truth, Lord? Because so many people just are in their pride right now. And that it's a scary thing being in deception because you don't know that you're in deception. And the only way to get out of it or to know if you're not in deception is to always go before the Lord. And don't ever think that you fully have it right, okay? Um, but these people that are teaching falsely, and I've been, I've done it too, okay? I've had to go back and delete videos that I've done on Facebook and things like that because I was telling people at one point you could lose your salvation. You want to know what the scary thing is? I thought that I was telling people the truth, okay? I believed what I was saying. It's not like these people are like, some people are going on, you know, camera, they know the truth, but they're going to tell you something else because they're wolves, right? But when you're in deception, you don't know you're in deception, okay? And if I never would have humbly seek the Lord on the truth, and I just would have just kept on going thinking that I had it right, right? I would have stayed in deception, and that's what is happening. And these people that are going on camera thinking that they have it right, not going before the Lord, are doing more harm to people because this is what I get on my end. This is what I see, okay? People feel condemned. They're scared for their salvation. They know that they believe in their heart. I can tell that this person who messaged me, I can tell they believe in their heart, okay? Because they're so scared right now. They're like seeking answers, right? And, you know, I really appreciate that this person came to me. But really what this person needs to do is get in the word and ask God for his truth. And um, they're sitting there praying, asking God for the Holy Spirit when they already have the Holy Spirit. Because Ephesians 1 verse 13 tells you that when... You believe in the gospel of your salvation. You hear that truth. You believe it. You receive the Holy Spirit and you're sealed. Okay. The word says that nothing, no one, nada, anything, no one can snatch you from the father's hands. And that includes yourself. If you think that you're more powerful to take yourself out of God's hands, then you're sadly mistaken. And there, it's just this person that is teaching people is saying, oh, grace alone through faith alone and Christ alone, right? But if you backslide or if you fall back into this, okay, you're going to go to hell. Listen, there's every single person on this planet right now who is a born-again Christian deals with things, okay? 
their flesh is battling with the spirit. It will always be that way. Even after Paul was saved, he still battled with it. Okay. He talks about that all through the Bible. And, um, you know, it just because, you know, somebody is not murdering or committing adultery. Okay. I don't know why people think that God, you know, looks at certain sins one way and he doesn't see other sins one way. Okay. People think that, oh, getting mad now and then or telling a white lie or, um, you know, you said you were going to do something and you did it or whatever it is. Like there's so many things we can go into. Like if we really need to name off what sin is, okay. The Bible says anything that is not of faith is a sin. Okay. But I don't understand why people think that God looks at these sins. Oh, you shouldn't be doing these. Okay. And they, and they will say just like the man in Matthew, the rich man, Jesus was saying, that you need to do X, Y, Z. And he's like, oh, in his arrogance, he was like, oh, I, I do all these things. What else? And then Jesus was trying to make an example. Like, listen, dude, you can't save yourself. It's not by your actions. It's not you. He was literally trying to show him that he's incapable by his actions to get to heaven. Okay. And this, this even goes along with keeping or maintaining your salvation as people think they're actually doing. People really think that they are maintaining their salvation by the things they do or don't do or the things that they do fall into or don't fall into, okay? So you might not be murdering. You, you might not be committing adultery. You might not be sleeping around. You might not be out there doing the worst of the worst, okay, in your mind, in the human mind. But Jesus sees all sin as the same. So if you've gotten angry, you've committed murder. If you've looked at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery, okay? And as long as you were, you are in this fleshly body right here. Okay. You will never, ever, ever hit the mark. You will never hit the mark. Do you hear me? And so these people that are preaching this doctrine, it puts it, puts the focus back on the born again believer. Okay. They start focusing on their sin. They're trying to clean themselves up because they don't feel like they're good enough. Oh, if I don't clean this area up in my life, okay, then God's going to leave me behind. And it's like it creates this righteous anger in me because I see the pain and the struggle that it's putting on other people that they might not see. Okay, I see it all in the comment section. People in fear and anxiety. And that's why I'm praying to God and just um, just asking him if this is something, uh, you know, if this person is anything that I need to address um, because... When, like, where I come from in my heart, if I ever correct an error, which I, I don't really even do this on my channel, okay? This is not an exposed channel, okay? This is a channel to lead people to Christ, all right? But when I feel led to correct error or, or whatever, okay, when I have, uh, very minimal in the past, it comes from a place of love, um, I don't have anything against people. I love people, even people who are deceived, even people who are not saved. Um, I have the love of Christ for them. And so it's not coming from a place where I don't like the person or have something against them. Okay. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the truth. It comes down to the gospel. Okay. And I see what it's doing to people and it breaks my heart. And so that's why, like I said, I'm just praying and asking God if this is anything that I need to even talk about. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I know that God uses all things for the good, okay? Even people who are in error, who are on camera teaching. But it's also causing a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear. And if there is somebody who is not saved that comes to that channel and hears this false gospel, okay? There's one way to heaven. It's by believing in Christ alone for their salvation, not by works, okay? And if somebody's, for the first time, who is not saved is listening to a works-based doctrine for their salvation, okay, it doesn't save. So this person might hear it and might go along th thinking that they're saved because they're in their flesh, by their actions, they're trying to get or maintain something, right, that, that you don't maintain it. Or you don't get it that way. You don't get salvation by your works. By the things you do or don't do. Okay? Salvation is a free gift. Not by works. 
So, um, I just like wanted to make this today and, um, just let you guys know that you have to go to God for his truth. Okay. Don't, you know, there are so many messages out there. There's so many people and it sounds good and it seems like, okay, but like people that say that they have dreams from the Lord. Okay. Why does everybody believe <laughs> that every dream they receive is from the Lord? You have to be very careful because Satan can influence your dreams as well. All right. And if it doesn't line up to scripture, if what somebody is preaching to you is not lining up with the word of God, then you need to question it. And even if it sounds good, even if you think it's lining up with the word, you always go back to God for his truth. Okay. Any message that you are hearing that is condemning you, you know, you believe in your heart. You know, you believe, okay, if, if you have believed in, in the gospel of your salvation, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried and that he rose again. If you put your trust and faith in what he did for you and not anything that you can do to save yourself, you admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior. Okay. If you believe in your heart, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Water baptism is a wonderful thing. I was baptized, but it doesn't save you. Speaking in tongues doesn't save you. Okay. Um, nothing that you do or don't do, um, that's not how salvation works. Okay. Salvation is a free gift from God. You just have to receive it. Okay. You have to learn the difference between salvation and discipleship. Salvation is a one-time event. Discipleship is after salvation. Okay. When you believe and you receive the Holy Spirit, God starts a good work in you and he will finish it. Okay. So I just wanted to come on and encourage you guys and give this message. I felt led by the Holy Spirit and, um, just stay strong out there guys, because there's a lot, there's a very thick deception out there. And even people who sound good, you know, it looks good. It sounds good. Um, just be very, very, very careful. Okay. You stand on God's truth, his promises, um, God will never steer you wrong. Man will. Let man be a liar. Let every man be a liar. And God be the only one in truth. All right? Love you all. Talk to you soon.